Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadhari Gopi 
Gopi Jana Bala Ba Giri Bada Tadi Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanatari Yamuna Tira Vanatari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Jai Srila Prabhu Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine 
Nirvisesha Samravadi Paschacha Deva Karma Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Now, so we're reading Brihad Bhagavatam Rita and we're hearing how Narada Muni is searching for the devotee who has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. And so uh, Narada Muni had come to he come to uh, Hanuman. Prahlad Maharaj had told him about Hanuman. That you have to go to the Hanuman, go and see Hanuman. And he went, Hanuman, uh, Narada Muni then immediately went, jumped up and flew off to Kimparusha, Kimparusha Varsha, where Hanuman is residing. And he came there and he could see Hanuman worshipping his deity. Who do you think he had a deity of? Yeah, he has a deity of Lord Rama and he's worshipping Lord Rama and he's worshipping Lord Rama just like he would serve Lord Rama when Lord Rama was personally present. So that deity of Lord Rama was none different from Lord Rama in person. And Hanuman associated with the deity just as he associated with Lord Rama. Of course, Hanuman, well, his glories were enunciated for us by Prahlad Maharaj. He told us about all the wonderful achievements which Hanuman had done in the service of Lord Rama. Just like when Hanuman was searching for Mother Sita. It was Hanuman who jumped across the ocean, which was a long way, it was thousands of miles into the middle of the ocean. And Hanuman jumped across. In, in, indicate, you know, it says thousands of miles he jumped across. It, it means, in other words, Lanka is actually not really, that's not really the place where. Uh, Mother Sita was held. It's not really the kingdom of Ravan. Although they call it Sri Lanka today, that's not really the, the Sri Lanka which was there thousands of years ago in the Treta Yuga, in the time of Lord Ramachandra. In the time of Lord Ramachandra, that, what is Sri Lanka today? That was a part of Bharat Varsha. It was all one, one, one land, there was no water there. It wasn't that Sri Lanka was an island or anything. It was all one part. But in course of time, they came separated. So actually, the kingdom of Lanka is somewhere in the middle of the ocean. And there's some islands there where Ravana was actually, the kingdom of Lanka was there. If you when you study the 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 Ramayana, they all say Lanka. You know, the, to go to Lanka it was thousands of miles. It was a long way. It was not a short distance. You know, so if it was the what we call Lanka today, it's very near. Anyway, we don't like to disturb the minds of people who have faith in these things. You know, they all people of their own faith, but uh, scholars who study these things will know. So anyway, Hanuman jumped across and he, he found Mother Sita and he greatly encouraged Mother Sita. 
uh, and to prove that he had come from Lord Rama, Lord Rama had given him a ring to show to Mother Sita, to prove that he'd actually come from Lord Ramachandra because Sita, she, she didn't know Hanuman. Who is this Hanuman? Who is this monkey? When Sita was kidnapped, that was before Hanuman had, before the monkeys had met Lord Rama. It was only when Lord Ramachandra was looking for Sita, then he came up, he met with the monkeys and they became his allies. So Sita didn't know who was Hanuman, and Hanuman came there. He had to prove his identity to Mother Sita. Otherwise, Mother Sita thought maybe he's sent by Ravan to come to trick her. But he had the, the, the ring which Lord Ramachandra had given him, and he showed that to Mother Sita and comforted Mother Sita and told her that Lord Rama is going to, he was, he could have taken Mother Sita back, but Mother Sita said she wanted to wait, let her husband come and bring her back. She didn't want to go back with Hanuman. So anyway, Hanuman then set about fighting, doing some damage to the kingdom of Lanka while he was there. And it said he killed 80,000 Rakshasa soldiers. And he killed seven, seven sons of Ravana's ministers. Ravana's different ministers, they had their sons, and Hanuman killed seven of them. And then he killed five of the commanders of the different armies of Ravana. And there was some big demon also who Ravana killed, who, was, who, who Hanuman killed, who was an ally of Ravana. So in this way, Hanuman, he really did quite a bit of damage there to Lanka. And of course, he did a, he damaged also the, the infrastructure, the kingdom of Lanka. He did a lot of damage to the whole place before he went back to see Lord Ramachandra and to tell him that he'd found Mother Sita. And of course, Lord Ramachandra was so grateful to Hanuman, so pleased that he embraced Hanuman. Although it's not very usual for a king to embrace a monkey, but Lord Ramachandra was so pleased that he embraced Hanuman. So Hanuman performed many wonderful services for Lord Ramachandra. And he said Hanuman was so big, he said, but it, it, just like they make these big statues of Hanuman, they're making a big Hanuman statue just beside our Lakshmi Nishringa temple over there, where, uh, where Varada Krishna Prabhu is. Is it Gandharvika Giridhari? Is it yeah, Gandharvika Giridhari temple? Not our temple, but next door to it. They're, they're carving, they're sculpturing a Hanuman from granite. Huge, going to be very big. So Hanuman was really, he was really big, you know, and from a far away distance, you could see Hanuman. When you saw Hanuman, then you would know Lord Ramachandra must be there because Hanuman was always by the side of Lord Ramachandra. So Hanuman does some wonderful service for Lord Ramachandra. And they use the word, Seva, Sevam, that he does Seva. But the type of Seva, the type of service which Hanuman does, it, it's usually we think you offer the fruit of your work and you give that to the Lord. But in Hanuman's case, it was more than that. It was more than just giving the fruit of his work. Hanuman employed everything in the service of Lord Ram. Body, mind, and words, all in the service of Lord Ramachandra. All of his senses, everything was completely absorbed in giving service to Lord Ramachandra. So in this way, he, he's teaching all of us the mood of a servant. Actually, to be the servant is not a small thing. 
you know, we can do, maybe we do some physical service. But Hanuman, not only using his hands to serve Lord Ramachandra, but he's using everything for the service of Lord Ramachandra, including his subtle body as well. So his mind also is absorbed in the thought of service to Lord Ramachandra. He uses his, uh, he uses his back. He's, he's got a big broad back and on his back, Lord Ramachandra will sit and he'll carry Lord Ramachandra. And not only Lord Ramachandra, he will carry Lakshman as well. Hanuman is so powerful and so strong that he can carry both Lord Ramachandra and Lakshman on his, on his back. And he will carry them wherever they want to go, whichever place they want. And Hanuman, he carried that mountain when he went to look for the the Vishalya Karana, Vishalya Karani, this uh, herb to heal the injured soldiers like Lakshman who had been injured, had been knocked unconscious. So he went to the Ganga Madana mountain to get the herbs to revive Lakshman and the other soldiers, other monkeys and so on who had been injured. So he didn't know which was the herb, so he brought the whole mountain. So he could carry heavy things. So to carry Lord Ramachandra and Lakshman was no problem for him. Just like Bhim, just like Bhim would also carry Bhima and Mahabharat, he would carry when the, when they were going, he would carry Kunti and he would carry the other Pandavas as well. They would all get be and Bhim would carry them all. So Hanuman also, Hanuman, they're brothers, they're both sons of Vayu, so they have the blessings of Vayu, they're very strong, they can carry these incredible heavy loads without any problem. So Hanuman was uh, doing so much nice service for Lord Ramachandra. At the same time, he's always... Uh, glorifying Lord Ramachandra with his words. He's doing, he's doing like writing poetry. He will write poetry. He's, he's not an ordinary monkey. He's an educated monkey. And he can write poetry. And he also likes to hear poetry. And sometimes he will re recite poetry written by other people. He will not only recite his own poetry, but he will recite poetry of others, which is a glorification of Lord Ramachandra. Only, only that which glorifies Lord Ramachandra. Without hearing the glories of Lord Ramachandra, Hanuman would die. He, can, he cannot live without hearing the glories of Lord Ramachandra. And wherever there is Ramkatha, Hanuman will go to that place because he wants to hear the glories of Lord Ramachandra. He never gets tired of hearing the Lord's glories. And he never gets tired of worshipping his deity of Lord Ramachandra. Remember how many years Hanuman served Lord Ramachandra when Lord Ramachandra was manifest in this world? In Ayodhya, how many years was Hanuman serving Lord Ramachandra? 13,000, yes. 13,000 years. And then Lord Ramachandra, then he took, he went and he took also others with him. The, the people of Ayodhya, they all followed him. They all went back to Ayodhya in the kingdom of God, in the spiritual world. But Hanuman didn't go. Hanuman stays here. Lord Ramachandra requests Hanuman that you stay here because somebody has to stay to help the conditioned souls and to show them the example of devotional service. 
So Hanuman had to feel that pain of separation from Lord Ramachandra. Can you imagine that he had served Lord Ramachandra for 13,000 years and then Lord Ramachandra goes back to Godhead and he asks Hanuman, you stay here. You don't go. So that was the, that was the austerity which Hanuman had to undergo. He had to undergo that great austerity, feeling the separation from Lord Ramachandra. The gopis in Vrindavan Leela, the gopis were with Krishna for a few years. Not very long. Not very long, just a few years. They were young. When Krishna left Vrindavan, he was about 12 years old. Although he'd actually reached the, the youth in Navayovana, he'd actually, he was like 16, but Krishna grew very fast. So every, everything, you know, his different uh, stages in growing were, were accelerated. Sometimes we see that. You see that the children of very great souls, they mature very quickly. Just like this boy Damodar, we have this boy Damodar here. You know, he can recite the Vishnu Sahasranam. He's only from, I don't, when he was six, he could already recite Vishnu Sahasranam. So most children, they don't have that kind of capacity, but some children mature and develop very quickly. So Lord Krishna, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When he appeared, you're supposed to be five, you know, well, that's first five years is Kumar. So Krishna was like three years, four months. But he was already like a five-year-old. And then the next stage was like that also. He was, he was six, six, six years, eight months. And then... Uh, he grew very fast, very quickly. So Hanuman, or oh, oh, the gopis, the gopis were with Krishna when he is in that final stage of period. No, when he's a, a child, Kumar, he, he doesn't worry about the gopis, right? <laughs> it's a different Leela when he's a child. He's with his mother and father, with Nanda and Yashoda and stealing the butter and everything. But then he grows up a little bit from five to 10, and he's more with the cowherd boys. The young cowherd boys are together and they're going to the forest every day and playing with the cows. But then when he comes to Kaishore, you know, 10 to 15, he's a bit older and there's more interaction with the gopis, they're dealing with the gopis. Just like children, you know, you can see children also when they grow up. The first five years they're with their mother, and then five to ten, you know, they're with playing football and kicking, playing with their friends. But then once they become like 10, 12 years old or 50, then they're they're growing up, you know. So, you know of course, the girls they mature even faster than the men. But you know, the men also they they reach that stage of maturity, puberty, and they, you know, they change. They're not like children anymore. And so, uh, we saw Krishna with the gopis. He was with the gopis, but not for a long time. And then he left, and it was very, very painful for the gopis. It was painful, of course, for all the people in Vrindavan. So how much more painful, how much more pain must have been there for Hanuman that he had to, he's alone. Everybody else is going back to Godhead. All the people of Ayodhya and Lord Brahma and everybody, they all entered into the Sarayu and they all go back to the spiritual world. But 
Hanuman, he stays back. He's left here because Lord Ramachandra wants him to be here to do service for the conditioned souls. So we have to appreciate the great sacrifice which devotee like Hanuman makes for the service of the Lord. To serve the Lord is not, we can see it, it's not an easy thing, not a small thing. That how much difficulty, how much you have to sacrifice for your, of yourself. Hanuman what would, wanted to be with Lord Ramachandra. He was always with, you know, he was so eager to be, to do service for Lord Ramachandra, didn't want to leave him. But Lord Ramachandra tells him, stay here. So he takes shelter of Lord Ramachandra's deity and he associates with the deity because the deity is not different from the Lord. Just as the, the Lord is in his holy name, the Lord is also in the deity. So Hanuman worshipped the deity every day, just like when he was with Lord Ramachandra in the forest, he would bring roots and different things for Lord Rama's food. Because Lord Ramachandra is living in the forest, he was in exile. That was when Hanuman was with him. So Hanuman, Hanuman those, at that time, he would bring Lord Ramachandra different roots and herbs for his meal. So similarly, he was serving the deity of Lord Ramachandra. He was also bringing different herbs and roots and offering them to the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India at one point, and he met a devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And the devotee invited Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come to his home for lunch. And when Lord Chaitanya went to his home for lunch, there was nothing prepared. And, and Lord Chaitanya was surprised. You know, he invited me for lunch. There was nothing prepared. And then the man came and said, no, oh, I had to go and get herbs and roots from the forest. I'm just coming now. I will just prepare the food for the Lord. So the man was a devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And he was bringing herbs and roots for Lord Ramachandra because he was worshipping Lord Ramachandra. And so he prepared herbs and roots and he offered them and then he gave them to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya very much appreciated how this man was worshipping in, in the same mood as if Lord Ramachandra was personally present. Just like when we cook. We should cook foods for Krishna, which is which Krishna likes. Prabhupada was in Los Angeles one time, and they gave Prabhupada these sweets, and they said that Prabhupada devotees made these sweets for you, and Prabhupada looked at them and said, "What is this?" And then they told Prabhupada, "I said, oh, it's some chocolate and some marzipan and like this and." And Prabhupada said, he said, why do you make sweets like this? He said, I told you, I taught you how to make sweets like Sandesh and Rasgulla and go, you know. I said, I didn't teach you to make all these things with chocolate and whatever. He said, you should make the sweets I showed you. You know, so when we offer to the deities, we don't offer these, we don't offer concocted things like that. Of course, some you often they, they, they will offer, in Mayapur they often offer, offer pasta. <laughs> pasta is very popular. <laughs> you cook pasta here sometimes. And of course nowadays people love pizza, you know, pizza. You know, Western, especially American people, they all grew up eating pizza, you know. It's not something I like, but <laughs> but you know some the American people like that, you know. Uh, so uh, 
cooking. We cook for Krishna. Cook what Krishna likes. So Hanuman was serving Lord Rama. He was doing the things Lord Rama liked. Everything the way he served Lord Rama when they were in the forest. This was very pleasing to Lord Ram. So Hanuman had helped so much when they when they had to go to Lanka. It was Hanuman who organized for the construction of the bridge across to Lanka. But uh, the the god of the sea requested Lord Ramachandra to build a bridge across the ocean. Lord Ramachandra was so angry that the ocean was blocking the path that just by his glance, the whole ocean became hot and all the aquatic creatures in the sea were roasting and burning. They were all being, the water had become so hot just from the anger of Lord Ram. So some, sometimes we tell the devotees that uh, just as Lord Ramachandra was so angry at Ravan taking Sita away, he said, in the same way, we should also be angry at the Ravan-like people taking Lakshmi away. Because Sita is Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. And today, Lakshmi is in the hands of so many Ravana-like people. Right? The people, you know, the big people with the money, they're all a bit like Ravans. You know, they have the, the money. They've taken Sita. They've taken Lakshmi away from Lord Ramachandra. So we should be angry. We should be concerned. We should be thinking how to bring Sita back to Lord Ramachandra. Hanuman is thinking how to bring Sita back to Lord Ram, we should be thinking how to bring Lakshmi back to Narayan, or back to Lord Jagannath. So, Hanuman organized the building of the bridge, Yet everybody, and everybody was to help. Of course, Hanuman, so he was throwing big rocks and stones across in the sea in order to construct the bridge. And there was a little spider helping. And Hanuman was telling the spider, get out of the way, don't get in the way. Yeah. But Lord Ramachandra chastised Hanuman and said, no, the spider is also my devotee. You must also give everyone a chance to do service. So in the same way, we recognize the service of everyone according to their abilities. Some people are doing big service and some people are doing small service, but everybody's service is appreciated. Just like we're building this uh, big temple of the Vedic planetarium in Mayapur. This is, they say this is a temple which everyone is helping to build because it costs so much money. <laughs> It costs so much money that even one person, the one person, you know, we thought Alfred Ford, he would build the temple, but it's, it's too much for even just one person. Everyone has to help. So everyone, you know, people are giving, some people giving small amounts and some people giving big amounts, but it all adds up. So when Lord Ramachandra was building the bridge, Hanuman was doing a major portion but everyone's service was appreciated. And Lord Ramachandra recognized everyone's service. So that is, a, you know, just like uh, this vision of equality. We want to have that kind of vision in Krishna consciousness, appreciating everyone's service. Hanuman also, he was. Uh, a learned, he knew the Vedas. He knew that he knew mantras and could recite mantras. He could do wonderful things. But at the same time, he's a monkey. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes the monkey 
the body is a problem. But he's a humble monkey. He is very humble. We, we see monkeys in Vrindavan, how they take your shoes, they'll take everything, you know, and they want, they just want you to give them some food, give them some fruit or something, then they'll, they'll put down your shoe. But Hanuman, he's a, he's a, a special monkey. He, he simply wants service to Lord Ramachandra. And whenever there's a Ramkata, he will come. And he cannot live without that, without hearing the glories of Lord Ramachandra. We should also develop that same, the same kind of urge that how to live without hearing the glories of Lord Krishna or without hearing the glories of Lord Ramachandra or his different incarnations. Or oh, one of the things which Hanuman also did by way of service to the Lord was uh, he would use his tail. He would use his tail like an umbrella over Lord Ramachandra because he has some white on the tail. And Lord Ramachandra as the king, in the Vedic culture, the king has a white umbrella. Lord Krishna would come to Dwarka, they would come with the white umbrella. And the different rulers, the different kings, they're, they're the only ones to have the white umbrella. Today we see umbrellas, they have so many different colors of umbrellas. But the king has a white umbrella. So Lord Ramachandra was in the forest. He was in exile. They didn't bring any umbrella with them. They brought bows with them because they're coming in the forest and they knew they were going to be rakshasas. So they brought their bow and weapons with them, but they didn't bring any umbrella for Lord Ramachandra. So how to show his position? So Hanuman would use his tail. By his tail, he would cover the head of Lord Ramachandra like an umbrella. So, the, Hanuman, just like we were talking uh, we're, in, in a few days, it's Lord Balaram's appearance day. How Lord Balaram did so many nice services for Lord Krishna. In the same way, Hanuman, there's so many services for Lord Ramachandra. When Lord Ramachandra gets injured, when he's fighting, if he gets a wound or something, Hanuman will come and Hanuman will give some treatment. Hanuman will be like a physician, like a doctor, and help to heal the wound of Lord Ramachandra. And Hanuman is the servant, he's the umbrella, he, he, he's doing so much, so much service for the Lord. Uh, I have to read. It says here, he was the very life of his soldiers, always giving great pleasure to his divine Lord and the Lord and the Lord's younger brother Lakshman. He devoutly served as carrier for them both. But he was the life of the soldiers. So he is a real hero. There's different types of hero. Someone may be a hero by charity, right? That's appreciated. If someone's, you know, very charitable, they give a big donation. Oh, he's a hero in terms of charity. And somebody's a hero in terms of religion. They're very pious and very religious, very devout. They're a hero in real, but someone else is a hero in battle. So Hanuman was a hero in the battle. 
you know, he could go out there and fight. And that would encourage all his other soldiers who were fighting with him, that they would see Hanuman fighting and they want to follow behind and also fight. They become enlivened seeing Hanuman fight so nicely. So this was uh, Hanuman's life of all the soldiers. He's supremely intelligent. He brought victory for Lord, Lord Ramachandra. He added to the spotless fame of his Lord who killed the king of the Rakshasas. So Hanuman, he, he's... He had that intelligence. He could help Lord Ramachandra to get victory at Lanka by giving different informations, telling the secrets about Lanka. And this way, Lord Ramachandra was able to deal with the enemy. I said it was Hanuman who encouraged Mother Sita. And by the Lord's order, this Hanuman the one true recipient of his master's favor, still lives in the world, though unable to bear separation from the Lord. So Hanuman still lives in the world. He's there at Kimparusha Loka, and he's worshiping his deity of Lord Ramachandra. At the same time, he's feeling separation from the Lord. Uh, he, he keeps himself alive by constantly hearing the glories of Lord Ram. Staying by the side of the Lord's deity, he is present even today with the same splendor as always. My dear spiritual master, Hanuman's greatness is well known from scriptural statements. Like the chief of the monkeys became perfect by acting as the Lord's servant. His servitude is proof of the Lord's mercy. So this is uh, this is Prahlad Maharaj speaking to Narada Muni because he's seeing my dear spiritual master. So Prahlad's telling him about Hanuman's glories, that Hanuman is always acting as the Lord's servant. And when the Lord comes, Lord Ramachandra wants to offer liberation to Hanuman. But Hanuman says, well, the, I, I don't want liberation without service. I don't mind. I'm not really anxious to be liberated. But if you want to give me liberation, there has to be devotional service. There has to be the opportunity to serve. Because if there's no service there, then my life is unbearable. Without service, I cannot live. So this is the mood of Hanuman. He doesn't want liberation if there's no service. Just Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shikshastakam is similar, right? Yeah. Which verse in Shikshastakam says that? Which verse in Shikshastakam says, I don't want liberation? Right. Yeah. So that's the fourth verse. So similarly, Hanuman also, he doesn't want liberation if there's no devotional service. Lord Chaitanya had told Murari Gupta in Krishna, in Chaitanya Lila, Lord Chaitanya told Murari Gupta, give up this worship of Lord Ramachandra. Radha and Krishna are the supreme. You should worship Radha and Krishna. Don't worship Sita and Rama. Just worship Radha and Krishna. They're the supreme Lord. They're the supreme personalities of God. You worship them. So the next morning, Marari Gupta came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he told him, 
I will have to give up my life. You have given me an order and I cannot follow it. I'm, I, I will have to give up my life. And Marari Gupta said, you asked me to give up my worship of Sita and Rama, but I cannot do it. It's breaking my heart. I cannot give up my worship of Lord Ramachandra. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent, sent, said, then you are Hanuman. You don't need to give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra. For Hanuman, he has to worship Lord Ramachandra. So that is the beauty. That is pure love. Although Hanuman obtained from the son of Dasarath the boon of liberation without striving for it, he never wanted to accept liberation without the opportunity to serve. To that Hanuman, I offer my humble obeisance. You certainly know glories of his that I haven't mentioned. Prahlad says to Narada Muni, he said, you know many things about Hanuman and Lord Ramachandra I haven't mentioned. Why don't you go to Kim Purushavash and see him for yourself? Be enlivened. So then Narada Muni jumps up and he flows through the sky and he goes to Kim Purusha and he's chanting all the time, how wonderful, how wonderful. And he goes to Kim Purusha and then he's going to see Hanuman there to see what Hanuman's doing. And of course, Hanuman's there with his deity. He's worshiping Lord Ramachandra. All right. Any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj, uh, for wonderfully describing the glories of Lord Hanuman. Wanted to know that uh, can uh, can we tell that uh, as Lord Rama gave him the instruction to continue preaching and uh, uh, for the conditioned souls uh, to practice devotional service, but what are the exact activities uh, Hanuman is doing? One is what I am able to understand is that uh, Madhvacharya is in uh, incarnation of Bhima and Hanuman, that is what we hear. And uh, Hanuman is also there in the flag of Arjuna and uh, he's roaring. <laughs> so, in this way, he is also participating in the preaching activities after the Treta Yuga. Is that a correct understanding or anything else which particular Lord Hanuman is doing for preaching? But what is he doing for preaching? He's encouraging the preaching by always coming to the Ramkata. Wherever there is Ramkata, the Hanuman will come there. So in that way, everyone can feel, they'll feel the presence of Hanuman when they have Ramkata. So that, that's encouraging the preaching. By the fact that he will always come once to hear the glories of Lord Ramachandra. Uh, just from his example, just by hearing about his example. That, that it's an inspiration for everyone to do service. As we said, he's there in Kimparusha Loka. So those souls who are more elevated, they can go there. They can go there and see Hanuman and associate. There are people there who live there with Hanuman in Kimparusha Loka. And so you can go there, you know, people who really want to associate with Hanuman, you can go there. You have to, of course, become qualified, but it's possible. 
You go there, you can be with Hanuman, stay there with them and associate and see Serpan. Certainly, it, it's hard for us to understand why Lord Ramachandra doesn't want him to go back to Godhead, but he wants him to benefit the conditioned souls. As you say, how do we know he's benefiting the conditioned souls? What preaching is he doing? So you're questioning like that. What preaching is he doing? Well, he's hearing and he's, he's serving. He's serving his deity of Lord Ramachandra. That's preaching. His example is there. Just like, you know, we don't, we don't know about everybody, you know, there's so many people on the planet. There's so many souls. Oh, somewhere else there's somebody called Jaipataka Swami. There's somebody called Radhana Swami. You know, we may never see them. You know, we don't see them. But we know about them, we hear about their activities. And so the same way we hear about Hanuman, we hear about his activities and how he's worshipping. It's not that we need to see everything. Prabhupada said like that, people say, oh, they want to see God. They said, why can't they hear? He said, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the light of the sun and the moon. It's not that you have to see everything. You need to hear. We get information by hearing, not just see. We don't depend on our eyes. Our eyes are not perfect. You don't, see, you don't see the pure devotee with your eyes. You have to hear. By hearing, you can understand. And so we're, we're hearing about Hanuman. We're hearing about his activities, his pastimes. So that should be enough for us that Hanuman's doing like this, Hanuman's chanting, he's always chanting the glories of Lord Ram, chanting his holy name, and he's always hearing Ramkata, he's worshipping his deity of Lord Ramachandra, and he's feeling, feeling so much the separation from Lord Rama. Thank you, thank you very much, Mahal. very helpful. Okay, any other question? No questions, okay. Then we'll stop here. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada.